was a reminder for myself, an abdukal ajeezu da'eefu miskeenu zalimu jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And always a reminder for myself that in these days of energy and the amount of manipulation with energy, the immensity of anger and qada to take people outside of Islam, that anger is kufr and this is from Prophet and this is the teachings that as soon as we enter into anger we enter into disbelief, recovering our belief because kufr is to know one thing and substitute it with something else. That when we know our belief is based on love and manners and, and good character, qadab and anger covers that. It covers what Allah wants from us and we give ourselves to a satanic whisper and satanic energies by lowering the vibration and allowing for the possession where the individual becomes possessed by that negative force and negative energy therefore they left their Islam because now something else is governing them to overtake their faculties and their belief because iman why anger is opposite of iman because iman is faith and love and when the heart lacks that love it's losing its presence from Allah and that this life of ours is so sensitive with what's happening on this earth and the immensity of the manipulation of energy that they are using the manipulation of energy to alter the weather, to alter many different things. And so these, these frequencies that will begin to affect the electromagnetic vibrations that affect the brain waves that affect the, the cellular level of the body means that every level the believer will be attacked. And that's an immensely frightful thought. So then this meditation, this tafakkur, this way of muhabbat and love is an immense safety. An immense, and that's why we, we describe it as an immense grace from Allah a divinely grace. When Allah wants to guide a servant it's an immense divine grace and rahmah upon the servant. Especially in last days because of the fitna of dajjal and the, the energy that dajjal is bringing upon this earth to corrupt the minds and the hearts of those whom believe, those whom follow him already follow him. But what he wants is those whom believe, that he wants to take their belief from Allah and bring it towards the belief of dunya and ask nothing from the hereafter and only request that from dunya. So when we get something from somebody saying that they're angry and they're leaving this way and they don't want to watch any more videos, they don't want to be with the shaykh. And always a reminder for myself and in our life that Allah sent as a mercy to hold the hand of these awliyaullah, these shaykhs and the representatives of the shaykhs, their rope in which Allah reminds us that hold tight bihablillah, hold tight to the rope of Allah and tafaraf don't make schisms and separate. Don't leave one to go to something else or at a moment of your life where you say, I'll just take my hand off thinking I'm being clever. This is not the way from Allah and it's not the way of Sayyidina Muhammad So then whom is inspiring such a thought for somebody? So many people think it but one person may actually write it and say it. Many people think, I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm angry with it, I don't feel anything from it, I'm like this, like this. Whatever the excuse and the whisperings of shaitan that come to the person 
the reminder for ourselves is we didn't find this by our cleverness. Although we may try to attribute that to ourselves, I found you on the internet, no. But we don't attribute anything of goodness to ourselves. Only attribute the badness to yourself because goodness comes from Allah Badness comes from people. You don't attribute any good to yourself because then the self, the nafs takes everything. So when I go to something good or I do a good action or I give or do something that is I know pleasing to Allah I don't attribute to myself. Was my training and the training that gave to us from our shaykhs is we attribute that to Allah that Allah's grant and ni'mat, His blessings upon me and He gave me ajr, He gave me an ability to gain a reward from His Divinely Presence and He wrote for me this good action and good amal and to receive this reward. Had He not written it, there's no way that I could have achieved it. So when I attribute only the good to Allah and all the bad to myself. Because Allah does, because that's the reverse of shaitan. Shaitan said, you made me to do this and he attributed his bad character and bad action to Allah And that's not the truth because the nafs of people, when we make a bad decision and we have a bad characteristic, it's solely from ourselves and our demons and our bad ego. And the goodness is attributed to Allah When Allah guides me, it's from Allah When Allah inspires me, it's from Allah If I speak something correctly, it's from Allah Anything I do wrong is from myself. And that's why all my prayers are, Ya Rabbi keep myself out of everything. And that's why we're continuously, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, Ya Rabbi that you guided me, that you sent me to this, you, you gave me this love, you gave me a character in which to love Prophet to have a reverence and revere that reality. These are all Allah's gifts for at a moment Allah can take them away. And when Allah takes them away we're left with ourself. And that's the one who emails and, and is angry and texting. It's no longer from Allah's blessings that dressing a person, it's when Allah left you to yourself. So this science is very real, there's no guessing. Especially by the shaykhs they're like doctors, they're licensed physicians in the way of the heart and the soul. They understand the sickness of, of the nafs, they're explaining to you the physiology. That if it's good, it's from Allah When Allah has left the servant and leave them to themselves, they are in an ocean of destruction and they begin to destroy everything. When they begin to talk with these types of talks, I don't want to do that, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave, I'm going to… you go. But all that you're doing is you cutting yourself, you're cutting yourself. We said it's from like a mountain, at any time shaitan make you feel like if you cut this the mountain will fall. But anybody with a mind understands, no the mountain stays, it's you that falls. So when you cut the rope you don't cut the mountain thinking, oh if I don't support nobody will support, if I don't come nobody will come, if, if I don't do like this the whole thing will collapse. No, the mountain always stays, it's everybody else that falls and that's all the shaitan wants. It keeps whispering to the person, cut your line and we described last night that you're, you're too powerful when you're connected to them, cut your line, cut your line. As soon as you cut your line you're left alone. And these are the decisions from the nafs and the bad character. That's why it's so important for us to write and when we write we post notes and every goodness, every good character. Even I was able to pray two rakahs Salatul Wudus from Allah I was able to give two dollars in the way. You think my nafs will have let me to pay anything? When I do it's from Allah The one whom has an abundance of Allah's blessings upon them. They make 
all of the right decisions. And you see them, they're supporting, they're giving, they're, they're going to this, they're doing to that, they're praying, they're doing their awrah, they're doing… It's why? Because Allah's abundance and blessings is upon them and everything that we do of goodness it has to be from the grace of Allah He's allowing me to pray, He's allowing me to fast because everything within our being will say, why you have to fast? Why you have to do that? Why you don't just break it like this time, break it earlier and earlier and earlier until you've convinced yourself, you don't even need to fast, you're so special. Means these are the, the energy manipulations that Dajjal is putting upon everything. When he puts these energies out, the overwhelming negative energy of TV, people watching all these TV, all these uh, Instagrams, all these social medias, they're bombarded by negativity then the negativity begins to make these decisions. Means they distance themselves from Allah and Divine Grace. That's why they can no longer give, they can no longer do, they can no longer pray and then they begin to cut the ropes and begin to email all sorts of expressions or text all sorts of negativities because they've been overtaken by the negativity that they put upon themselves. And then they're so negative that they want to blame all this and this on, on the shaykh, on the teaching. They don't even want to take the responsibility of their own negative characters. These are the dangers of the last days and this is all that the, the Dajjal is, is interested in is cut each person individually, individually, individually until they're left cut and isolated. And the one whom cuts their rope from this reality because this is a, a way of manners. When Allah grant for you an association on a shaykh and says, I'm granting for you a seat in that association, go there participate. That seat is a seat of honour and a gift from Allah this is not a bus stop where you leave that gift, you leave that, that seat, you leave what Allah gave you of a blessing and a ni'mat and it's not a bus where you can take the next one. It doesn't work like that. The, the, the only way to understand it is that the stamp of bad character is upon that person. And they can never sit in another association to regain a status once Allah has stamped them with this bad character. That's why the school is a school of manners. If, if we do bad things, have bad characteristics and think that I can just say whatever I want, attack however I want and I will go then to the next shaykh and everything will be okay, it's no. Your ticket now has been stamped and when it has that stamp of bad character there's no shaykh who will take you into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because your adab has been stamped upon the character. Means this is a ni'mah from Allah that He give you an admission into a school, sit and learn from them. The only time you can leave if the shaykh has come against Islamic laws and has died and then the student will be transferred to other shaykhs to begin to teach them. But it's not a bus stop, they can go from bus to bus, catch another one, be rude on one bus, scream at everybody on one bus, get on another bus and nobody knows who they are and begin to make problems on that bus and it's not like that at all. This is an immense school of blessings, of good character. Everything that been given to us from Allah is a Divine gift. How are we going to use that gift? The knowledges that have been given to us were to perfect our character and that's why we describe that we are truthful servants and our madhab is muhabbat and love of Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That love governs us through all our jurisprudence. There's no law that you can explain to me that allows me to be 
vile and rude and abusive, my governing law is love. The love of Allah the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that should be guiding my character, my mannerisms, my tongue, my eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet. And that love then makes me to be true to that way. As a result all the jurisprudence and laws then come beneath that Divine love and make it sense. That's why their common sense in every jurisprudence can be understood because the foundation of it is based on love and Muhammad. So we've been to many places where people talked about crazy things that in their love they could go and push their father, they could do this, we, go, we, we had to walk out from their association. This man was talking on the love and talking very vile expressions of character. And that immediately on our compass is like a buzzer that, this is a liar and don't even be in the presence of that liar. The foundation of our law is Divine love and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the servant becomes true to that love and that love then begins to grant that character. The softness of the character, the truthfulness of the character, truthful in their actions and their deeds and that's what's important. So when people begin to exhibit vile characteristics, rude characteristics and think they're also in this way of love, say, no it's not true, that's not the way of love, that's just the way of shaitan. Shaitan is vile, shaitan is rude, shaitan is despicable and dirty and filthy. And none of that is similar to the truth. For Allah said, when the truth comes, the falsehood perishes. And that the falsehoods, falsehood is zahukan, it, it disseminates into dust because it has nothing to stand, it has no glue that binds it. And this ashq and this love we described before how, how much it's a part of our lives. Is that when you begin to come to the tariqah, you recite the zikrs, you recite the awrads, you watch the teachings, you contribute and you give and you participate, a glue from the love of Sayyidina Muhammad begins to enter into your entire being. It's not something you see, it's a glue that binds you. That's why we said our majlis and the majlis of salawats is more powerful than their zikrs. And these people who were doing zikr and not salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad and they all fell apart, where are they now? All their groups have fallen until the shaykh recalibrates himself and recognizes the only thing that holds you together is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad when that love is first. When that association is first, now the power of the zikr is moving on to the person. But the glue, jismu, the one that is that holds their atoms together, it is the atomic bond that holds our entire atomic being together. What is that strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force? We said before, it's ishq nabi is the ishq of muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad It's in our entire atomic being. When that love is there, you can't break it. You can't break away from it. You can't break your hand from it. It is the bond that carries everything. As if you're asking to make everything in your life to collapse. That's the extent, that's why Allah in the talks we gave for the bayat, the one whom breaks their covenant, breaks it at the detriment of their own soul, breaks it at the detriment of their own soul. Because this flow and this flow of energy and love that comes when we take the hand of the shaykh and the hand of the shaykh to the hand of Prophet and Allah's hand upon their hand, that is the flow of that glue 
and that bond that bonds our entire life, our entire path, our entire existence to reach to our real Islam. That's not a bond that you can just say, um, uh, yeah thank you very much, I'm, I'm out. Without the entire structure and foundation to collapse. So it's a huge blessing, huge blessing, huge responsibility and in the last days a huge protection. These are all of the, the warnings in this contract and understanding that this bond of love is immensely powerful and is an immense protection against the fitna of Dajjal. If we can hold tight, if we can keep our good characteristics. That's why the schools are, are… its primary function is to teach good characteristics and have continuous majlis of Salli ala Nabi That love and the praisings upon Sayyidina Muhammad the continuous making of salawats, praising and putting the salawats within our home is the glue and the power that holds us together keeps us to be balanced in an ocean that continuously trying to flip us in different directions. When we can continuously hold through these difficulties Allah comes to the rescue and, and begins to send immense lights and immense support within the heart so that we can traverse these oceans of difficulty onto the next obstacle. But the system is not meant that we can do all sorts of bad things and we just go to the next bus and the next bus. This is a gift in which comes if any time in anyone's life it only comes but once. And many people never even got the, the invitation once. They're not interested in tariqah, they're not been given an invitation by Allah You can talk to them all you want. They're their ears are locked from hearing that reality until Allah opens. And Allah was telling, it's not you that guides but it's we that guide. Means that you cannot make somebody to believe, that belief has to come from Allah's permission. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and continuously grant us this ni'mat and this honour of guidance and love of Sayyidina Muhammad hold tight to the tariqah for ourselves, our families, our communities and all whom we love in an, in an ocean of immense difficulties and sadness. That when we see all of these children going left and right and, and people leaving their path, it shows to us how frail and how sensitive and, and, and how I don't know the word for it but how, how immensely important that gift is and that our love to be deep and deeply rooted and not like a flower on a rock that as soon as one wave comes that flower is gone and never to be seen again. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.